No one should underestimate the weight of money and moral posturing behind the Yes campaign for an Indigenous voice. Now, it's true that the voice is weakening in the polls, but that could all change during 33 days of intense campaigning with Yes ads saturating the airways and social media and Yes celebrities telling the country that it's somehow racist to vote no. Now, believe me, there is a tidal wave of money behind the Yes campaign, starting with $5 million from the Ramsey Foundation and $2 million each from BHP, Rio Tinto and West Farmers. There's also tens of millions of dollars that the government has given the Australian Electoral Commission to sign up voters and money on the table committed to counter so-called misinformation, most of which is likely to be Yes case propaganda. All up, the No campaign reckons it's going to be outspent 10 to 1. Now, referendums, even more so than elections, because constitutional change, well, it's for keeps. Well, elections are only three years, of course. They should be decided on argument, not on ad campaigns. But if a referendum result can be brought, this one will be brought, by a politically correct establishment that feels guilty about our history, and wants to stay on side with the activist class. Aided, of course, in all of this by a media class already captivated by whatever is woke, so more than willing to run the yes line, and rarely, News Corp, of course, and this channel as an exception, rarely willing to give the no side much airtime at all. It will be hard enough to resist the avalanche of cash, but then there's the moral pressure that's already being brought to bear explicitly through workplace, workplace seminars that only present the yes case and implicitly through the constant welcomes to country that almost everyone's subjected to reinforcing the message that Australia really belongs to just some of us, not all of us. And this will only intensify as the referendum gets closer. Today, the Herald Sun reported that Victorian public servants can be ordered to support the yes case as part of their official taxpayer-funded duties. It's reported that, and I quote, new guidance released by the Victorian Public Sector Commissioner has put public servants on notice that they can be directed to work to support the yes vote. It goes on, the government of the day can lawfully ask public sector employees to do this as these employees must implement the policies and programs of the elected government. As one senior bureaucrat told the Herald Sun, and I quote, Anyone who disagrees will have their card marked. The Victorian opposition said today that the government is gearing up to throw the full weight of the Victorian public sector, including all of its huge resources and people, into partisan campaigning for the yes case. I might add, though, the Victorian Liberals, they support yes. This is going to be repeated, as you know, in workplaces around the country where people will be intimidated and subtly threatened into voting yes. And it's why no one should take comfort from today's news poll showing the no case is ahead 46 to 43 per cent. Now, sure, the trend's against the voice, but it's not yet beaten. The money, as I said, is yet to be spent, and the bullying, well, that's yet to come. Just look at what Jacinta Nambajimpa Price has copped. Noel Pearson's attack on her for supposedly, he says, punching down on blackfellas and being caught in a redneck celebrity vortex, well, that'll soon be directed at everyone who refuses to accept that Australia is essentially a racist country and who pushes back then on The Voice. Whether it's denying that The Voice is just the first step towards treaties and multi-billion dollar reparation claims, or whether it's suddenly repealing the West Australian heritage laws that were stopping people from doing anything significant to their own land without specific Indigenous consent. The Yes Camp is trying to say both that this is history calling, vote for the voice, but also that what's on the table is nothing anyone should worry about. Well, the heritage laws that had West Australians turn dramatically against the voice and the Labor government, well, they will be back with a vengeance if the voice passes. And unlike the WA heritage laws, which of course could be repealed because they were merely legislation passed by a parliament and what one parliament can bring in, another parliament can take away, this voice will be forever because the voice will be in the constitution. If, of course, we're mad enough to vote for it, and let's hope we are not. 
Six months ago, there was a tendency to say that the voice couldn't lose. Now I'm worried there's a bit of a tendency to say that the voice can't win. Now, believe me, it can be beaten. This is no time for a premature victory lap. Our country won't be safe as a place where there is no hierarchy of descent and no privilege of origin, to use Bob Hawke's immortal words, until the vote is in, until that vote is a resounding no.